Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. Well, what a week we've had so far. It's been absolutely crazy, and we're going to get into uh, some charts and some markets very, very soon. But this, I think, is a massive story. So the head of Grayscale, the CEO, is actually stepping down. So we'll go on and read. So Barry Silbert steps down as Grayscale CEO. The largest cryptocurrency asset management company, Grayscale, will see a shift in its executive leadership as founder Barry Silbert is prepared to step down to focus on other initiatives of Digital Currency Group. So Digital Currency Group uh, is the bigger company that actually owns Grayscale, so the parent company. So announced Thursday, Grayscale will, Grayscale will see a change in its executive chief officer position. The founder of the company, Barry Silbert, who was acting as its CEO until now, will step down. In his place, the high-ranked executive position will be assumed by Michael Sonnen, Sonnenheim. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Sonnenheim is the company's long-standing manager director and has supposedly played a massive role in attracting new investors and making Grayscale the largest crypto asset manager. Speaking on the matter, he commented on his future plans for the company. I want to make Grayscale synonymous with digital investing like PIMCO is with fixed income and Vanguard is with index funds. Meanwhile, Barry Silbert, who is also the CEO and co-founder of Grayscale's parent company, Digital Currency Group, will shift his focus on it. He said that the company will be announcing another new subsidiary in the future while also uh, adding that. All eyes are on the Coinbase IPO, which will result in the repricing of many companies in the space and accelerate them M&A. All right, so that's pretty big, and you know what a time to be stepping down right in you know kind of the beginning, maybe not the beginning, but anyway, still the early parts of a bull run. I would love to know, you know, exactly how that sort of came about, but I'm somewhat guessing that because of how much interest. Uh, Sonnenheim has drug, uh, drummed up into the Grayscale uh, fund that that maybe have something to do with it. And look, maybe, uh, what's his name, Silbert has been there for quite some time and just wanted to move on as well. Who knows? But I think that's extremely big news uh, at such a early part of a bull run. you think that someone would wait. Uh, but actually, maybe it's smart, you know, get in while things are really good and everything's really going up before it goes through a bear market. So yeah, I don't know. Anyway, congratulations to Mr. Silbert uh, on, you know, a great time with Grayscale, no doubt. And also congratulations to Mr. Sonnenheim on, you know, taking over the reins. And it'll be interesting to see what Grayscale can do. Now, staying on the Grayscale theme, we go over here. Grayscale now holds over 3% of Bitcoin. They're still buying it like crazy. You just have to wait for the information to come out. Um, and here it says, so Grayscale Investments uh, LLC, uh, new chief executive officer, says the world's largest manager of digital asset expects increased interest from institutional investors such as pension funds and endowments to continue to fuel its rapid growth. So we go down here. We're st we've started to see participation not just from the hedge fund segment, which we've uh, seen long participation from, but it's recently from other institutions like pensions and endowments. Mr. Sonnenheim, who was named successor to, Barry, uh, to founder Barry Silbert on Thursday, said in an interview, the sizes of allocations they are making are rapidly growing as well. So again, we need to remember, you know, people were saying, you know, you should be putting 1% into to Bitcoin. A minimum of 1% should be in Bitcoin. That is growing. People are now going, well, maybe not 1% one, 1 is not enough. But also, it's just the amount that companies are putting in. Again, you know, originally a company, let's say, worth uh, you know, $100 billion might have put $10 million into Bitcoin. So, you know, this tiny little, you know, minuscule amount. Now they literally are putting in bigger and bigger size amounts. And we saw that three capital the other day. You know, they didn't come out and say exactly what it was, but I think it was well over a billion dollars uh, that they put into uh, cryptocurrencies. So a lot of it, I'm sure, would have gone to Bitcoin, but others, uh, you know, some of it would have gone to other parts as well. And again, they bought up 6.1% uh, of all of Grayscale's Bitcoin trust. So one entity did that. There are more entities to come and other entities may buy even more. We'll have to wait and see. Grayscale has 10 funds and currently manages $25 billion in assets, up from $2 billion a year ago. So they have, you know, that's basically 10x and some. 
that's uh oh god what is that that's yeah about 11 x uh something like that 11 and a bit x sonnenheim said the bitcoin trust has seen the majority of the inflows amid a, a rally that pushed bitcoin to forty thousand on thursday for the first time now it has retraced some from there and we're going to have a look at that but again this just continues to grow and this is still the early part this is going to continue that's you know, I don't want anyone to think that means there can't be any retracements. There absolutely can and there will be. That's pretty much a given, but it'll be short lived. This is, you know, the hype is still building and it's going to get more crazy from here. That's the crazy part at the moment. I mean, I was in the, you know, the full mania part of 2017. That was kind of, you know, September, October, November, December, and even into sort of January. So 2017. Uh, September right through to January 2018 and it was just mental you know things were doubling overnight and you know it was just constant it was you know Bitcoin had run one day altcoins had then run the next and then Bitcoin had run the day after that and altcoins had run the next and money you could see was just jumping in and out of the two back and forwards back and forwards and people making you know ridiculous amounts of money just unbelievable kinds of gains uh, and something similar to that is going to happen uh, in this stage and look we've already had a mini altcoin run right now my personal belief is it's not the altcoin run yet I think the Bitcoin dominance is still way too high and I think we'll likely have to have a correction uh, a, a rather significant one before we really go into a, a true blown altcoin season again I could be wrong just my personal opinion but look let's go here and have a look at the Bitcoin chart so we can see we've actually been rejected quite well from that sort of $40,000 mark. On Bitstamp, it was 40354 I think on some others it was about uh, 40500 uh, And there we go, that's around about there. So boom, we've had a rejection and now it's just kind of sitting around this $38,000 mark. Now something we need to keep in mind, here in Australia at least, it's Friday afternoon, so it's like 2.30 Friday afternoon here in Australia. So a little bit later, it's going to come to Friday uh, morning in other parts. And this may be the start of the traditional kind of weekend pullback. We usually get it. It happens around about sort of anywhere from a sort of a late Wednesday night, depending on where you are, particularly overseas, uh, and can run all the way through to a sort of Monday morning. So here in Australia, uh, we see it. Uh, again, around about a Thursday night, which again was last night, and this is where it sort of starts, last night. Uh, and it's not to say that you sell off for the whole weekend, but generally you have a pullback at some stage during the weekend. The best time to buy Bitcoin traditionally uh, is sort of Monday. Um, but again, if you watch the markets, it's after a pullback, uh, again, after a dip, uh, on a weekend so again just roughly say it's Monday the best time to buy is Monday and the best time to sell is Wednesday if you're a trader that's when you really want to get in and out and that's generally how they do uh, that and you can you know if you just go back counting through these a lot of these are on weekends uh, now not all of them you definitely have weekends where you push straight through and then what happens is you get a pullback uh, and it'll come back and cover the CME gap, which is exactly what happened back there. Uh, this is a Monday sort of morning, uh, very early Monday morning, boom, pulled right back, covered those CME gaps, and now it's just started to move again. And again, this is kind of more, this is Friday here in Australia, but Thursday in other parts of the world. So again, maybe, you know, this candle hasn't finished yet, so we still have to wait and see, but maybe this is that traditional pullback. And now look, sometimes, they can be two days. I don't even know if this is on a weekend. We'd have to go back and see. But sometimes it can be two days. So let's say this is uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday starts to fix up. Uh, and then Monday. Again, I, I don't know those dates. I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking at. But that is what can happen. So maybe tomorrow we pull back even a little bit more. And look, maybe this is the start of a correction. Who knows? I've got no idea. I, I well, not I have no idea. I just I don't think we're going to have any major pullbacks. But this is a pullback right here. I mean, let's have a look. What have we done? Right there. All right, there we go. That's a 10% pullback. So a 10% pullback in a matter of sort of 24 hours. And again, this could go even a little bit more. Or this could just suddenly turn green and go higher. We'll just have to wait and see. But that is a reasonable, healthy uh, sort of correction. 
And that's what makes me think we're not going to get a big one because every time we do get corrections, other than these tiny little wicks here, which we won't really count, they're very small. They just keep getting bought up. and We just keep hearing new news about a new company who's coming in and buying uh, a Bitcoin. Now, I did see somewhere that a whole stack of um, exchanges went down. I heard Binance went down. I heard Kraken went down. And of course, you know, would you believe it? Coinbase have gone down as well. I do think some of these is, are coordinated. I think big institutional players and in that want to get cheap Bitcoin. Uh, and I do think that uh, there may be some assistance from uh, some of the exchanges there that they just happen to go down when things are really starting to fire up. And almost like circuit breakers that they have uh, on the stock exchange and that. Uh, th that's what I think it kind of is at the moment. They can see the price going too high. Uh, they have institutional buyers saying we want it, but you know we don't want to pay a million dollars. And so they come up with some reason to be, you know, offline. And then it just stops everything. The price cannot go up anymore. And again, we just see these. These are, you know, three reasonable size candles uh, in a row. And it was probably looking like it was going to go a fourth. And they just, yeah, they put a stop to it. That's my personal opinion. Uh, you know, I, I could be completely wrong. A bit of a conspiracy sort of theory there. But anyway, that's what I think. All right, let's go over here. So cryptocurrency markets. Now this is a bit old, but we're at 38,000 here and 100, uh, 1 trillion, sorry, we're not even in the 100 billions anymore, but it's 1 trillion and 19 billion dollars. All right, let's give this a bit of a refresh. See what comes up now. 1 trillion and 19, Whew, there we go. It's going up. So there was, you know, 9 trillion added, uh, sorry, 9 trillion. 9 billion added right there in a matter of, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or something. But what we can see is that there is definitely some losses here. So this is what happens. You have to take some cap, uh, you have to take some profit at some stage. And how you take it is really up to you. Uh, I did take profit, so I'll quickly go over here. So it says, how many of you took profits this weekend? Uh, if you haven't yet, I'd realize some of those gains. Having cash to buy the dip is key. Now, I completely agree with this. Now, I'm not a fan of cash, but you can't buy dips with other crypto that's dipped. It just it, it sort of doesn't work. You need to be taking uh, some profits and have some cash sitting on the sides. So me, I took some cash and I've got some uh, cash sitting on the side just waiting. And I also have cash with BlockFi. Uh, earning great interest. I think it's 8% or something. Uh, so again, I'm just waiting for when these big dips occur and not these little dips like this. Uh, again, you know, I took the profits, not all the profits, but I definitely took some of the profits uh, from these coins uh, and put them into cash. And I've taken some of the profits from my altcoins and put them back into Bitcoin. I am trying to increase uh, and grow my portfolio overall. Uh, I do think the altcoins are going to be the better plays uh, in the sort of more short term. And I'm not talking like next day or two or next couple of weeks. For the rest of this bull run, don't get me wrong, I think Bitcoin starts, to, you know, continues to go up. How high, I don't know. I'm going to say a minimum of $100,000. It could be wrong. It could be less. Uh, it could be a whole lot more. But I think, you know, for me, at around about this point, if not maybe sort of $50,000, I don't know if putting you know money into Bitcoin uh, is going to be my play anymore. I've got my Bitcoin position. Uh, I'm happy with it. I will try to increase it uh, through the altcoins. I could just keep throwing money uh, into, not throwing money, but putting money into Bitcoin, dollar cost averaging. But again, I just, I don't know if that's the best play. It's so high now. I just don't know where the top is. So let's say that the top ends up only being like maybe $82,000. That's it. That's the top. That's the highest we go in this bull run. I'm going to say this is going to drop back down to at least 20000 So really at the moment, money that I'm putting into Bitcoin, unless I'm you know, selling at a good stage, it may not be the best investment. Now again, that's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, and so for me, it's not that I won't put any money into Bitcoin at the moment. I probably will. But I'll be looking to uh, take cash out of it quite regularly. Or 
to be honest, more likely, I'm just going to start to play the altcoin markets from here. I, you know, I've got a year of putting in some dollars here and there, and I may be able to make some great gains with Bitcoin, but I could also maybe not. So it's more just, you know, I don't like to say gambling, but taking a bit of a bet uh, on some of these other altcoins that I believe in. Like Ethereum, it's still not at its all-time high. It's very close, so I think that's the, the better go-to at the moment to dollar cost average. Once Ethereum hits its all-time high, then again, I guess, you know, if it was worth $1,400 at the peak of the old one, what would be a reasonable, you know, prediction for the next, uh, you know, high? Uh, let's say it's five thousand dollars. All right, so Ethereum's going to go to five thousand uh, dollars at the peak of this time. Would I want to invest once it's past halfway uh, to its all-time high, or what I believe is going to be its all-time high? Again, if you're just doing it for short term and you're going to be taking uh, gains and again putting some back into Bitcoin, uh, putting some back into cash to buy the dips and to get you through the next bear market and that, yeah, maybe. But for me. Uh, anything that's under its old all-time high that's still a good project and has got you know things happening so again uh, Litecoin uh, you know uh, Mimble Wimbles uh, being put out there uh, they're teaming up with Cardano uh, you know I think its all-time high was three hundred and sixty dollars or something so it's still about sort of nearly fifty percent down from its all-time high so not in my personal opinion again not financial advice please don't rush out and buy litecoin just because i'm saying that but this sounds like it has a whole lot more upside to me bitcoin is already now you know pretty much twice the price of its old all-time high so again on the short term kind of plays don't get me wrong i'll be happy to put money into bitcoin but i think i'm going to make better gains from some of these other ones i already have my bitcoin position uh from here on in any money that's going into bitcoin uh will be you know once it goes up 10 percent, 20 percent, or 30 percent, or whatever it may be i will likely cash that out at some stage uh, it'll be to increase my cash position or taking the profits from uh, bitcoin uh, and looking to put them in some other you know altcoins that haven't pumped yet but again, basically what I'm trying to say is I don't think this is the real altcoin season yet. Look at Bitcoin dominance. It's still up around 70%. It's still very, very high. I think we're going to have to wait until Bitcoin dominance you know, drops below 60% and starts to get down to the 50%. Oh, excuse me. Had to burp there. I'm not sure we'll ever see the lows of 30% uh, anytime soon, if maybe ever again from Bitcoin. Well, not maybe ever again, but at least now. The institutional adoption of it is too big. Uh, I think, you know, to get under the 50% may be a bit of a stretch, but look, we'll have to wait and see. Things are going to get, you know, a whole lot crazier than what they have been in the last couple of weeks towards more the end of the year. Again, you know, September, October, November, December, and even January into 2022. I mean, things just could be absolutely mental. Uh, but that's the thing. No one knows exactly when that's going to happen. But I don't think we've seen uh, altcoin season yet. This was just a little mini altcoin rally. Bitcoin continues to kind of creep up uh, ever so slowly. Again, this is what it's done over seven days. Uh, it may be plateauing here a bit. But I think we need to have a correction before we go into a, a full altcoin season. And Bitcoin needs to you know, get to somewhere where it just ranges for a period of time. And look, don't get me wrong, this could be it. Maybe Bitcoin ranges here for quite some time or maybe Bitcoin has its good correction from here. Hence why I took some profits the other day. I've got cash sitting on the side and cash working for me. Well, not cash, but dollars. Anyway, not actual physical cash. Physical cash, I don't think, uh, will, will be around in the not too distant future. Everything will be digital, full stop. All right, but let's have a look. Movers, what really moved? Well, Decentraland. I had Decentraland earlier in the year and it just did nothing, as you can see. I mean, this is what it was like, but for a long time, Decentraland was doing nothing and now it started to move. And for me, I, I don't really care. Uh, you know, my money was better put into other things. I had, you know, no point in waiting months and months and months for something to do, uh, you know, to go up, you know, by 100% when you could have had it in something else that went up, you know, 400% in that time. So... Uh, not hating on Decentraland, but you know, I was simply in it for the profits. 
Engine coin, this is one I stuck with. I am bullish on engine coin, and I think the gaming sort of space will be big. Uh, I was very close to selling my engine, though, and it seems Decentraland might have been the better one to sort of hold on to uh, as it pumped a little bit harder. But anyway, thank goodness engine has finally made a move, uh, and I'm no longer in a loss. But in saying that, I do expect to see some... Uh, pullbacks and hopefully the pullbacks uh, don't get me into the red but I'll be holding my engine anyway I didn't buy you know thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of the stuff but I believe uh, gaming is going to be pretty big we'll have to wait and see nano god anyone who was on nano well done I mean it's having a pullback now we can see but geez uh, what a run it's had Yearn finance plenty of big movers even XRP and of course, you know, I sold at the very bottom pretty much, you know, 19 bloody US cents. I sold pretty much all my XRP and now it's worth 30 cents. Um, yeah. Oh, well, you live and you learn. I still have some XRP, uh, so it's not like I lost everything. Uh, but that's the way it goes. Right. What about losers? Any big losers? Yep, definitely. Stella, of course it was going to have a pullback. Again, you can't go up that much and not have a pullback. XRP is going to have one. Same with Loopring. Went absolutely crazy, so of course it's pulling back. But they're still pulling, you know, making some of those gains back as well in the last hour, so we'll wait and see. Ren, I'm glad it finally started to move, but on the BTC chart, it still is uh, very low. I'm really hoping that, again, you can never time it perfect, but I'm hoping that I got into a uh, build another position in Ren that does really well. I built a position quite some time ago uh, and it's just been getting absolutely hammered by BTC. Uh, not the dollar value, you know, it still made money. I think it made like, you know, maybe 10 or 15% over, you know, a number of sort of weeks to months uh, in the dollar, but in BTC it was getting hammered. Uh, and I did show the chart the other day. I'm pretty sure I did anyway. Uh, Ren was looking pretty good uh, against BTC, so I made a position. Uh, and we'll wait and see. And it did perform. Look, uh, I got some of that there. But now we'll have to wait and see if it's got another leg up. All right. Gas prices. All right, we'll finish with that. Good Lord. Gas prices. They were 70-something or 90-something this morning. So I don't know what has happened. Something's happened. And I'm guessing it's people trying to get into the alt space, which is generally uh, inside ETH. And so gas prices are just going absolutely ridiculous at the moment. You know, these layer two solutions, they just won't come quick enough. You know, x Matic, Loopring, you know, all those kind of things. We need them to be, you know, widely adopted oh so much faster. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. You should all have been on that game train. And I'll see you next time.